This is Ashton Marcus with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and I'm on location here at the Junior Blind in Culver City in Los Angeles, and I'm here with Kevin Kern. Kevin, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes. Um, I've been playing piano my entire life. I started to play when I was very, very young, about a year and a half, as it turns out. I uh, started studying piano when I was four and started studying jazz when I was uh, six or seven. Took up classical very aggressively in my teens and have enjoyed a wonderful recording and touring career for the last 15, 20 years. It's been a, a wonderful experience for which I'm very grateful. So tell me, oh, when did you- was there a milestone point in your life when you realized, hey, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a musician. I am a musician. There was a milestone point when I realized I was a composer. I always was a musician because I literally can't remember a time when I couldn't play. But I wrote a piece when I was about 17, and when I finished the piece, I suddenly knew that I could write music at the professional level. And from there, there was no turning back. Oh, that was fantastic. So uh, what was going through your mind at that time? What were you feeling? It was a piece that I wrote for a girl upon whom I had a, a vice-like crush, you know, as you, as you do at that age. And uh, that was the inspiration for a, a melody that I really uh, came to appreciate and still love. You're actually doing a concert series right now, and just wondering what our viewers can actually expect if they actually attend your concert. I'm actually playing two concerts. One of them is on the 17th, and it will be with another wonderful pianist by the name of Louis Landon, and he and I will be playing our original compositions. We will also be playing duets where we exchange places on piano and melodica playing jazz standards. On the 23rd of January, I will be performing with two wonderful musicians, David Nevue and Joe Bongiorno, and we will be appearing as part of the Whisperings concert series at Kim's Piano in Stanton, California. For more information on this, please visit the concert page of my website at www.kevinkern.com. Okay, and also, I understand, well, we're right here in Junior Blind, so I do understand that you're legally blind. So could you share with us some of the tools that uh, you use to, to compose your music? Well, as I was explaining during the uh, little get-together that we had with the rest of the students just moments ago, I owe so much to David Pinto, the founder of the Academy of Music for the Blind, His pioneering efforts in the field of accessibility technology for blind and visually impaired musicians have literally altered the landscape for generations of blind and visually impaired composers, performers, producers, audio engineers, arrangers, students, teachers, and enthusiasts of every stripe. My life is forever changed because of the technologies that he has brought that make music-making possibilities available that simply weren't before. When you visited the Academy of Music for the Blind, what was your uh, impression about the, uh, the students and the teachers? The Academy of Music for the Blind is definitely one of the most inspiring environments I have ever seen. What these teachers accomplish with these young people is simply astounding. The confidence with which these children are instilled, the example that they are provided, the encouragement that they are provided, the opportunity opportunity that they have to see themselves as filled with possibility is a truly remarkable thing that they will carry with them the rest of their lives. So what advice would you give to a young, aspiring, blind musician? Probably the same advice I would give to any aspiring musician, regardless of visual disability. Practice hard. Listen to what your teachers have to say. Concentrate on your music. Most of all, 
Enjoy making music. Let it come from your soul. Let it be a part of you. It will always be with you whether you become a, quote, professional musician, unquote, or not. Thank you very much for being on our show. It's been a pleasure, and thank you for having me. Here are a few candid clips of Kevin Kern at Junior Blind. Yes. Awesome. So he's in town. He has a concert tonight. He has another concert next Friday. Right. He's also here for the NAM convention. Oh, you're here for NAM? Oh, and yeah. Old oh, yeah. friends nice. of David. For Steinway? Uh, yeah. Steinway does not exhibit at NAM no. directly, but uh, I go there because I'm also advocating on behalf of the community to make hardware and software. Uh, more accessible to us. Oh, That's wow. Cool. That Amen. is awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, Shane will probably be performing at NAM next year. Ah, in, nice. in his band. Oh, great. That's yeah. his son, a uh, 14 year old tall guy, yep. plays mm -hmm. everything. He does. I love it. <laughs> you guys know Ellis Hall? Yeah, Shane's He's the guy who plays everything. Yeah, Shane as long as it doesn't go in his mouth, <laughs> so, so he can sing. Right. Uh, I, I don't. He's been here. I know, oh, I'm sure he has. Yeah. Uh, I don't know Ellis really much at all. I probably shook hands with him twice in my life, but he was good buds with uh, two other guys I went to New England Conservatory with because they all went to Perkins together. Mm -hmm. And one day oh, yeah. when I was in college, Ellis, before he moved to Los Angeles, when he still lived in the Boston area, uh, he came to New England Conservatory and there was a Halloween dance and we assembled a funk band and oh the special gosh. guest was Ellis, and he played each of four sets on a different axe. He played keyboards one set, bass one set, drums one set, and guitar one set, and sang his butt off all night. Oh my gosh, that's and awesome. We, and we danced to it, and it was wonderful, and I'll never forget it. My son is doing a funk show. For, uh, he has a, uh, a band that he works with all the time, right. and they have a funk, so he's, they're going to be performing at the Whiskey in June. Ah! How nice! Yeah, so he's going to be doing Stevie Wonder uh, oh, sure, Superstition, sure. but instead of him playing the keyboard, right. he's playing the guitar. He's playing ah. that, that. Okay, that. okay. So yeah, it's going to be cool. So you're going to perform, perform, perform me today? Uh, I, I guess I'll be playing a couple things, but I'm playing a, a concert tonight at the Mission Viejo Civic Center. Oh, nice. nice. So if, if you, okay, you can have a minute, uh, we'd love to. You know, We'd love, we'd love your support. Uh, another Steinway artist friend of mine named uh, <laughs> Lewis Landon and I are going to play a uh, concert. We're going to play. We're going to take turns playing piano and melodica duets. Melodica. Beautiful. Yeah, I, I brought a, a melodica. Gavin loves the melodica. Yeah, she has a. Have to whip it out of the trunk and. and like, yeah, I can go grab it if, uh, or you know, yeah, don't yeah. mind. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a. Well, We'll get it over. Okay, sounds yeah, good. Yeah, okay. Uh, those, those is there some, like, something else we need uh, to Yeah, I'm going to take um, Kevin to Gavin and Rita's yeah. jazz okay. now. Delight and a pleasure. Yes, very nice to meet you. Thank you, everyone. It's very nice to meet you. Thank you. Let's well, keep going around and I'll talk to you soon. Showtime. We got even Gigi, great grandmas in house. I love it. We got two great grandmas in house. I think I'm wearing a mouth. Okay, I'm going to introduce Mr. Kevin Kern to all of you, and if you want more information, www.kevinkern.com, K-E-R-N, all right? I'm going to pass you over to this Steinway artist and pianist. Hey, everybody. It's, uh, it's been wonderful being with you all today. This is probably one of the most inspiring uh, groups of people and institutions and just general vibe you could possibly hope for. You're extremely uh, fortunate to have this institution and this organization, these wonderfully dedicated people to uh, bring out all this music. I really am honored to be here today and to participate with all of you. You've really left me tremendously inspired. Thanks so much. Um, David is a friend of mine going back some 20 years. Uh, I owe him a tremendous debt of gratitude. So much of what I've created wouldn't exist were it not for all that he has created. His pioneering efforts in accessibility technology for the blind have made an indescribable difference for generations 
of blind and visually impaired musicians, composers, producers, audio engineers, arrangers, students, teachers, and enthusiasts. And I just want to take a moment to say thank you, David, for all you've given us. Because of you, the world is just not the same. Anyway, uh, to explain um, to explain a little bit more about my situation, for the past 15 years, I have, or maybe more, I guess by now, I've been blessed to have a really uh, wonderful opportunity to compose and record and perform for uh, an ever-growing worldwide audience. I've had the opportunity to see a great deal of the world and uh, hopefully my music has made a positive difference in the lives of others. Um, if you like, I'd like to play one of my original compositions. This is probably one of my better known uh, better known pieces. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, this is probably one of my better known pieces. It's from my first album, and it's called Sundial Dreams. number and it's going to be Kevin and Nathan but before uh, we well while we're getting ready for that I just want to tell you Kevin we have uh, ten kids up there under the age of eight seven six five and four they didn't that's the quietest I've ever seen them during the performance and some of them Kevin some of them were singing along did you hear that because your melodies are so natural and so beautiful. So that was thrilling. I wanted to let you know that. That's the effect it had. 
And um, just so you guys know, Kevin's performed in Taipei, Seoul, Korea, um, Singapore, a lot of places in Asia. So Japan, China, you'll hear his music um, in like I don't know, Korean dramas, things like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, he accompanies. Um, I mean, you'll hear his beautiful, uplifting piano music in a lot of these, uh, you know, wonderful movies. When I was at the University of Michigan, I split the uh, the jazz piano chair for the, the University of Michigan for the University of Michigan jazz band with another gentleman who was cited. His name is Brian Chung, and he's now uh, vice president of operations for Kauai North America, I believe. I ran into him at NAM a couple of years ago, but anyway, the uh, International Association of Jazz Educators was in town, and there was a reception with a, a saxophone player by the name of Nathan Davis. Nathan Davis, I guess, was a professor uh, at the University of Pittsburgh or somewhere, and he came out of the Coltrane uh, Giant Steps era, okay? Played tenor and soprano. So, the director of the jazz band, who was a, a former uh, jazz trumpet player, had a couple of dates on Blue Note back in the day, uh, sent the rhythm section to play behind him. And I buttonholed the director and I said, you know, I think I'd better go along. Because Brian was a fine reader, but he was not schooled in the tradition, need I say more. So I go and I meet this man and they start to play and they call Autumn Leaves, which the guys pull out of the real book. You know what's coming. <laughs> the real book, as it was constructed in the 1970s, had the changes from the original Roger Williams performance, key of E minor, first change, A minor 7. The sax player came from Miles Davis, G minor, first change, C minor 7. Right hand to God, I kid you not. <laughs> The rhythm section was literally playing in one key and the horn player in another. And they were trying he was trying to tune himself into position. <laughs> when oh, the no. piece stopped, I said, You guys don't know what happened, did you? Said, no, I said, You guys are reading this out of the real book. Your changes are X. Yes. You expected this from the jazz tradition, your changes are Y. And neither of you knew. <laughs> and they all looked at me like, you know, like, like, well, I don't know what they looked at me like. Interpret <laughs> what I knew. And I said, okay, guys, my turn. So I pointed at the sax player who was, you know, the visiting star, and I said, I love you. Key of F, let's go. <laughs> that was the, yeah. And then the rest of the story. Again, my apologies for interrupting, but it, you guys were discussing, if you sing it here, you do this. If you play it here, you do this. Thank you, Kevin.